Hi, today we're going to take a look at the statistics between two different kinds of electric bikes, an Aventon e-bike and a track e-bike. Now, I would have thought that a lighter weight uh, bike would have lower RMS or lower kurtosis, but let's see what the data says. On the left here we have the Aventon e-bike, which is heavier. And on the right, we have a Trek e-bike, which is nice and light and a little more compact. Here we're looking at the data, and uh, we can see we're going about 15 miles per hour in this stretch of our recording. We have the Aventon here, and we have the Trek. Uh, they both look pretty similar in amplitudes, but I do see that the Trek is a little bit higher. So what do the statistics say? To do this, let's look at a math channel. And um, let, let's add a RMS of a Venton in the Y direction. And I'm going to give that a unit of G RMS. That way it's separated from my other data and isn't laying on top of it. While I'm here, let's also add an RMS channel for the Trek. And we'll make that a GRMS. All right. So there's the results. Um, the Aventon is lower than the Trek by quite a bit, actually. So the uh, RMS of the Aventon is about 0.15 GRMS, and the RMS of the Trek is about 0.2. Now, I'm saying about because there's a lot of variation. One thing that I can do to change the variation that I see is I can change the uh, averaging time constant. So we, this is an exponentially decaying uh, average. So let's change it to 60 seconds instead of 10 seconds, which is the default. And you can see that that made things a lot flatter. OK, let's do that on the other one, too. All right, so that right away made things a bit easier to interpret. Um, I know that I'm now averaging over a longer duration, but maybe that's okay. Let's see how the RMS in the time domain applies to the RMS that I'm seeing in the frequency domain. Now, a really good way to do this is to add a power spectral density graph. So let's do that now. Click plus, and then we're gonna add in our power spectral density. We're going to look at just the y-axis of these two. And then all we have to do is add an RMS cursor. So I'm going to now add a cursor of a type RMS. And then we'll spread that to the beginning and the end of the frequency range. So what do we see here? We see the a Venton in the y-axis is about 0.199, and the track is 0.28, which is kind of reflecting what I'm seeing on the left here, where the track has about 0.3 here, and the Aventon has about 0.22. Now, the benefit of looking at this in the frequency domain is we can also isolate what frequencies are predominantly causing this RMS, and we can see it's skewing uh, to low frequencies. But if you want to know the contribution amount of just a certain range, you can just change the spot that we're measuring the RMS. So maybe we want to concentrate on this higher frequency section over here. And that tells us quite a bit of the RMS is coming in this uh, band from 190 to about 2000 hertz.